Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Jasper. I'm, I work in the SCORE main office in Portland, and I'm joined by David Green, our Northern chap main chapter chair, uh, for today's presentation on starting your own business, a topic that anyone can uh, glean some information from. I want to thank our sponsor today, the TD Charitable Foundation, uh, for sponsoring. And uh, David, you are a professional, and, we've, and I hope uh, to have a great presentation today. Why don't you take it away? Okay, I will uh, go and share my screen. Let's see. And yeah, since we are having this as a uh, meeting, if you have any questions, just use the raise hand function and uh, we'll get you in. Okay, slideshow. Okay, I'm trying to get slideshow from beginning. Okay, um, I can see some of you there. Can you see the slides? Okay, <laughs> well, we're off to a good start. Sometimes we're not. Um, so I'm uh, David Green. I, uh, I'm the chapter chair for SCORE in Northern Maine, which is about six counties from Knox County North. Uh, so it's a big, uh, big territory. Um, so today's topic is starting your own business. It's uh, one that SCORE runs regularly, uh, has a, a number of different presenters, and this is my second time doing it. So as I said, I'm the chapter chair for SCORE in Northern Maine. I'm actually based in uh, Bangor, uh, and I'm also a Maine small business owner. Uh, my wife is my business partner. Uh, we've had our own consulting business for uh, 19 years now. So we've uh, uh, learned a lot along the way. And uh, if I had listened to starting your own business when we first started our business, I would have been in a better place faster. Than, uh, than, than it was. So I've probably made it, you know, all the mistakes that small businesses make along the way, and I'll be happy to share them with you. So let's see, oh, there we go. So uh, Jasper will be, uh, J Jasper is my wingman here. He will be, um, you know, looking after the chat and uh, in, in the chat, you know, please put in the name of your nature of your business if you or, or the business you're thinking of starting, you know, what stage you're in, any key questions you hope that we can address today, because we're uh, we're here for you. We want to, you know, give you as much as we as we can give you along the way. And uh, any questions you have, since it's a relatively small group, um, put them in the chat. Uh, Jasper will find a time to interrupt me, um, appropriate or not appropriate interrupt <laughs> and uh you know we can uh, you can come off mute if if need be and uh you know say what your question is we'll get some dialogue going so please use the chat and feel free to ask questions anytime there's no such thing as a wrong question so uh we've got some uh blue slides and we've got some green slides so the blue slides uh, are introducing some uh, some content, and uh, there'll be a lot of links in here for additional information. And as I said, questions are welcome at any time. Uh, when uh, Jasper sends out the you know the the link to the to the recording, uh, the slides will be in there, and uh, the, the links will be there, so you can you know look at the slides. You can follow the links, and you can get more information in depth. Then every now and again, after each section, we'll have some green slides. So this is really just summary of recent points that have been made. And uh, it'd be good if you had some, some paper and a pencil or pen to, to kind of take notes, because uh, you'll find that the hour and a half goes very quickly. Uh, and if you don't write down your questions or your thoughts, then it will be very easy to, to lose them. So that's the, that's the different color slides. So, Thinking about your goals, um, most of us, when we're starting a business, say, oh, yeah, I know what I want to do. You know, I want to open a nice cream shop, or in the case of my wife and I, we want to open a consulting company. And, uh, you know, you have an idea about, uh, you know, how you go about doing that. You have some uh, subject matter expertise in the kind of business you start. But something that many of us don't ask is, why are you doing it? Uh, and uh, Simon Sinek has written a nice book in this. Uh, he's also got many webinars as well on uh, the golden circle and, and why you're starting a, you know, a business. So I had a client um, 
on Friday and uh, you know he wanted to start a learning management system. So I said, you know, so why do you want to do it? Well, I'm doing it because I'm good at it and uh, I want to make a difference to my clients and I want to make a difference in the world. Uh, okay, how about making a living? Oh yeah, <laughs> also, <laughs> no, I also want to make a living. So I said, well, uh, maybe that's another part of it is you don't want to just break even. Uh, you want to make a good living at it. So let's let's make sure that uh, you make a difference to your clients, make a difference in the world, and you make a difference to yourself. So Simon Sinek is, uh, you know, you, if you Google him, you'll find lots of uh, lots of things in the web, lots of webinars, and um, you know things on um, you know YouTube that you can watch. It's good. It's, it's, it's thought provoking. So for your own business that you're either you have either started or you're thinking of starting, you know, why do you want to do it? Start with the why, you know, how you're going to accomplish it and what is your product or service. So it goes in a different different order from what we what we normally do. So anyway, what is a business? Well, uh, most of us, when we start a business, uh, we say, well, we know what the product is or we know what the service is. Uh, you will have some employees. It might be yourself at the start, uh, or in the case of uh, myself and my wife, there's just the two of us. Although we have hired uh, subcontractors from time to time to, to help us out. Uh, you will always have vendors, uh, regardless of how big or how small you are. There's people who give you, uh, you know, printing ink and, uh, you know, materials and, uh, you know, the things you need to do to run your business. So you always have that. So you have the whole supply chain there. You have the, you know, whether it's a complex or whether it's simple, you have your product or service that you deliver. You'll have uh, vendors that supply you and uh, you're most likely to have software. Uh, it might be as simple as having a Microsoft Office suite, uh, having QuickBooks to run your business, uh, but you might have a, you know, a customer relations management system. Um, or something else that you know takes some of the load off you so you don't have to do everything manually and you'll need some capital uh that capital might be you might be self-funding you might be bootstrapping and we'll get into that or you might need to uh, put a business plan together and go to a bank or get a grant uh, so you have enough operating capital to to get you off the ground and you'll need equipment you know if you're uh you're doing an excavating business, you're going to need some heavy equipment. If you're you're also going to also always need a computer and a printer and uh, you know the basics like that. And some policies, some procedures, some processes. Uh, you may think you, you don't need much and you may not need much, but uh, you will need to know how to get things done, you know, consistently. Uh, particularly if there's you know several people in the business. Uh, you need to have those uh, policies and you need to have those processes. So the same process is followed uh, every time with every client. So that's a business. And what is your role as a business owner? Well, getting the funds to, to start. So many of us and many of the people I, uh, I uh, mentor, in Maine are going to be self-funding. They're not going to need all that much money at the start, um, you know, so they can uh, they either have some uh, some money in the bank that will get them going for, uh, you know, in, until revenue starts coming in, or they might have, uh, you know, family who said, yeah, I'll throw in $20,000 to, to help you get going. It sounds like you have a winner here. Uh, or you may need to go to a bank uh, or the SBA to, to get, funding or uh you no know, get a grant from somewhere so a lot of people see grants as being you know easy money uh it's usually not they're usually strings attached it's usually uh takes a, a lot of time to to write a, a grant proposal and you have to wait sometimes a long time before uh, the, the, the grant authority gets back to you. So grants sound great. They're not as good as uh, I wish they were. <laughs> it's, not, it's not free money. There are always strings attached. It's always a lot more work than you think. Uh, you have to sell your product or service. And uh, you know, so that means you know, get out there and you, you may have some some friends or some cli potential clients who 
uh, can get you going, uh, who say, yeah, I'll, I'll take a chance and I will, uh, I'll give you some business. And you need to build your team. So your team may be employees, but it's also your accountant, could be your score mentor, uh, could be your, uh, your, your lawyer, could be your banker. You know, when I first started my business, someone said, your three best friends are your accountant, your lawyer, your banker. And in the first year, they, they really were. Um, got you know free advice from, from them that was uh, kind of invaluable to stop me going in the wrong direction. Unfortunately, I didn't have a I didn't have a score a score mentor in the early days, but I did use the small business development center, uh, who's provides a lot of the same you know the same scope as uh, a score does to to help uh, small businesses, and you have to develop your processes and monitor your financial statements. Um, I know when I first got going, uh, I had some clients in the. I, I, I'd moved here from uh, from the Dallas area, so I had some uh, some partners down there who gave me some some money. However, money was tight, and so I monitored those financial statements every few days. Every time a check came in, <laughs> I monitored to see how I was doing. Every time a check went out, uh, to see how much money went in the bank, and uh, I was self funding, put some like thirty thousand dollars in. Uh, between my wife and myself, to, so we had some working capital to, to go. Not everyone has uh, that, that option, so you have to think about, you know, how much money do I need to get to get going, and where is that money going to come from? So, uh, notes here, the green slide, uh, how much money do you, do you need? So having the rudiments of a business plan, it doesn't need to be... Uh, Really, uh, doesn't need to be a thirty-page business plan, but you know, maybe a one-page thing uh, will get will will be enough to get you going, and maybe a few pages. You know, what processes do you need to develop? You know, what equipment do you need? What vendors? What software? You know, what policies do you need uh, for your uh, for customers and for for your team? So those are things that you will you will need. And uh, as far as resources go, uh, most of us start a business because it's something we know something about. Uh, if, if somebody's opening a restaurant, the chances are they've, they've been in the restaurant business. Uh, and, you know, my wife and I started a consulting executive coaching business. Well, we'd done that for a number of years. Um, you know, I, I had done it internally in a large corporation. Um, I had 100,000 people. Uh, there about it. So my wife had had done it, uh, you know, uh, kind of solo, uh, working in both Canada and working in the the Texas area. So having personal experience means you 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 know what you're doing. Uh, you may not have run a business, but you know the te the technical things uh, about what you need to do to deliver the product or deliver the 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 uh, you know the services and a certain amount of risk tolerance. Uh, starting a business is almost never guaranteed. Uh, I haven't come, come across anyone who had a guaranteed business. So how, uh, what is your risk tolerance? Um, you know, if you don't get paid for six months, is that okay? Uh, or is it not okay? Um, you know, and what are those talents? Be clear about what it is that you can do and what you'd be good at and where your passion is. I mean, that's part of where Simon Sinek in the Golden Circle says, you know, what is it you're passionate about? Because uh, uh, you will need that passion to get you through the hard times. And family support, if you have a, uh, you know, a life partner, uh, is that life partner okay with you giving up your day job and, uh, you know, going out alone? Uh, many, many times uh, the life partner will become uh, the one who's paying the bills for, for a while. Uh, in, in the hope that uh, your own business will be uh, will take off and that you can make a, a decent living from it. So those are the some of the resources. And uh, I have to say that when uh, I uh, started my own business, I seemed to be working all the time, as in, you know, uh, there was no time off. Weekends really didn't exist because there was, you know, getting the website going, uh, developing uh, training programs that might take a week to to develop in the hope that someone would say, yeah, I, I want that. But uh, you know, the, the work, uh, the, the work is always more than we think it will be and getting going. 
So is that okay with your, your life partner or your family? So there are more resources that uh, you do need money. So having a, you know, a business plan that uh, and a cash flow projection, and that, that's somewhere SCORE can help. Uh, in the early days, the Small Business Development Center helped me and my wife uh, get going. Uh, time, likely more than you think you will need. It would take a lot of energy. Um, uh, you need to be healthy to do this. Um, actually, I had a you know score client, and it started off uh, really well. Um, you know, it was a a lady who was uh, kind of sponsoring her daughter to start a coffee shop, and then the the lady got sick. She had been sick from time to time. Got sick, and you know they just couldn't do it. They didn't have the energy to um, you know to pursue their dreams there. So health. Health is an important thing, and skills. Do you have the skills to, you know, to provide the service, to provide the product, and uh, you know, you, we we in Score can help you develop the skills to, um, you know, to to run a small business and to run that small business successfully, and uh, the merits of having a business plan and looking at the, uh, you know looking at the business, looking at the risks, looking at um, the cash flow projections. I mean, if it's not going to work out, if you know the business doesn't have legs, if it's not going to be uh, successful, then it's better to know before you uh, throw your whole life in disarray by starting a business, uh, losing money and going out of business uh, quickly. So, you know, having a, having a mentor, whether it's us or someone else, um, um, will help you help you be successful and if it's not going to be successful it's better to know early on uh, before you've really invested uh, too much uh, time and energy uh, in it so resources to develop money how much money will you need uh, is your family behind it how much time do you have uh, you know many of our uh, score clients uh, have, have a day job they have a full-time job doing something so is this going to be uh, the a weekend and evening thing? Uh, is that okay? And do you have the needed skills to uh, needed skills to to do what you need to do? And uh, top reasons startups fail. Excuse me while I take a drink. Well, this is from a study back in uh, 2018. Uh, but every time I, I kind of look at the, the SBA or uh, McKinsey or someone else who studies these things, uh, the numbers are usually pretty much the same. But 50% uh, of businesses fail within five years. Um, so we in SCORE would like to ensure that our clients don't fail within five years. If you do get going, that you know we're going to help you be successful. So 38%. In this study, ran out of cash or failed to uh, raise new capital. Uh, it's very hard to get funding from a bank if you don't already have. Uh, if you're a startup, they don't like to take the risk. Uh, it's more like you're more likely to get money from a bank or even the SBA if you've uh, already started your business and you have uh, you have cash coming in and you have some steady uh, steady clients who. Um, and your business is growing, uh, you're more likely to get money that way. So most of us start out by bootstrapping, and we'll get a little bit into that a little bit, where it's our own money that's, that's in it until we have enough cash flow coming in uh, that we can you know, go and talk to our, our banker and say, okay, uh, remember that business I started six months ago or a year ago? Well, it's going somewhere, and I'd, I'd like to grow it. You know, I'd like, uh, this is the capital I need, uh, I need to hire an employee or I need to invest some money in something. So uh, a bank is more likely to listen to you then. And sometimes there's just no market need. Um, this was a this was a mistake my, my wife and I made uh, that uh, we had uh, lots of experience in doing a lot of things, particularly myself. You know, I had a background managing an e-business uh, consulting business for Nortel Networks covering the Americas. And I'd, uh, I'd done, uh, you know, business process re-engineering uh, covering the Americas and had teams in seven locations. And uh, and I'd also done, you know, training and I'd 
you know, uh, soft skills training, you know, mainly. And uh, I, I'd, I'd done a lot of coaching. So when I came here, I said, that's what our business is. It's going to be all these things that we're good at. But nobody was interested in, uh, you know, e-business. Nobody was interested in uh, paying us for um, business process re-engineering. So th these are things we had in our website, said we, we can do it. And then uh, we kind of backtracked a bit. Uh, to to say no, we'd better not do that because nobody's interested. Let's get really focused. And uh, one learning that I I had is, you know, all the all the marketing specialists used to say, so so what's the one thing that you're really good at? So well, I'm really good at a lot of things, and uh, that that was a mistake. But we learned from that, and I <laughs> advise all my score clients get really clear about the the one thing you're going to be really good at. Start from there. So defining your customer's needs. So coming at it from not from the perspective of what you are good at, but from the perspective of what clients are, are needing. So what problem are you solving? You know, and why is it a problem? And how will whatever it is that you're, uh, you're offering, your product or your service, how does it solve client problems? And why would they buy from you instead of a competitor? Uh, the chances are pretty high that uh, if you want to do something and you're good at it, somebody is already doing it. So what's, uh, what is it that you're going to do better than everyone else who's already doing it? And does solving this problem interest you? Is this your, is this your pa passion? Anything yet, Jasper, in the... Uh... We have a few people introducing themselves. We can... Uh, touch on if you like a uh, couple oh, sure. interesting ones. I know recognize one from uh, looking for uh, one of them looking for a score mentor already. And if you guys haven't already applied for a score mentor, it's always a quick and easy process right on our website. Uh, we've got Chris from Ergonomic Gardens, a uh, upright standing uh, you know, raised garden company, Elspeth. Um, I hope I didn't butcher that, but uh, Elspeth Savani. Uh, hope, hoping to renovate their barn into a sandwich coffee ice cream shop as well as music venue. And I, recognize, I recognize Elspeth's name. I know she asked for help from SCORE a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got a few people in mind I'm waiting to hear back from. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and Alessa uh, Foley looking on um, a nonprofit inclusive day summer camp uh, for kids with and without disabilities. And yeah, that's everyone who's introduced themselves. And if you guys haven't already, um, and if you have a you know business idea, feel free to introduce yourself. And if you do have any questions, um, let us know. Yeah, well, with the nonprofit, uh, you know, most most score mentors like like myself or you know, have I, I, generalists in business. We know a lot about starting a business. We know because we've done it <laughs> you know we've uh, we've started a business but for nonprofits, we have a couple of uh, specialists in that we have one in the score office who uh, only works with nonprofits, and we have uh, someone down southwest harbor uh, dennis uh, dennis mm -hmm. wint his name is who only works with nonprofits. so one of the nice things about score is if you hire uh if you take on a mentor uh and we don't know something, then the, the, the chances are pretty high that we have a subject matter expert in SCORE who does know uh, more than we do. So I, I bring people in all the time, like uh, we have a, a guy uh, who's a specialist in you know food and beverage. Uh, mm -hmm. Any of you in the Bangor area who eat from Harvest Moon Deli, uh, Keith Manneker is one of the owners of that. And, uh, you know, Anytime I have a client who's in the food and beverage business, I say, Keith, can you come and join me? Uh, yeah, so, and uh, we're not we're not just limited to Maine as well. We're a nationwide organization, so yeah, we've got a whole a whole country's worth of uh, experts. If, if there's really someone, I mean, Maine, we we have a lot of great mentors here. So if we can't find someone in Maine, which is usually rare, uh, we've got yeah. great resources to pull from. So don't hesitate. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think score is ten thousand uh, mentors and subject matter experts across the country. Yeah, we're wow. part of the Small Business Association, um, and so uh, I had I've only once had to get an out of state person. It was a somebody in uh, down in the Santa Cruz area, but uh, nice. he was he was phenomenal. Anyway, I, I'm rambling. Sorry about that. I tend to do that from time to time. 
Yeah. So uh, purchasing, you know, what, you know, who's, who's your ideal client here? You know, what attributes do they have? Is, is it any age, any range, any gender in, in particular? You know, are you looking at some income range or geographic area? You know, you're looking at rural areas, looking at towns, uh, you're looking at uh, just the city you live in, you know, whether it's Bangor or Portland or, you know, Machias. Are you looking at any particular life stage, um, or uh, you know, aiming at people who have a certain occupation or interests or hobbies, or you know, politics causes goals. So who is your ideal client? And uh, I, I, I learned uh, something from one of our subject matter experts. She lives in Cherryfield, and uh, you know, she's uh, you know one of our marketing subject matter experts, and uh, so. I brought her in to work with my client who needed help with digital marketing. And uh, she kind of narrowed it down to, you know, what is your ideal client here? And what's your client's name? We're going to call, you know, her, uh, Veronica, your the client. So tell me about Veronica, who's your ideal client. Uh, other people may buy from you, but, uh, you know, we put together this profile of what Veronica looked like. And then, well, that's pretty cool. I've never, you know, I've never taken that approach before. So we have uh, several subject matter experts, who, uh, you know, in, in marketing who use different different approaches, etc. So who's who's your ideal client? Who's going to buy from you? And it might be everyone. If it's an ice cream shop, it's anyone who doesn't have type two, type one diabetes is going to buy from you, uh, etc. So and, and that might be seasonal as well. So many many of our clients, particularly in the uh, the hospitality business, it's, uh, you know, they may be taking people for hikes in Acadia or, you know, charter boat business. So that tends to be, uh, tends to be not year round. It tends to be, um, you know, seasonal. So who is your ideal client? And uh, this little model can be helpful. Uh, you know, what is the problem uh, that you're trying to resolve? You know, what what is the solution that you have? You know, and who's your target market? So you may have to go through several iterations of this before you, you know, kind of narrow it down. Say in the early days, I got that wrong, uh, and I wish I'd known this. Uh, you know, in the first couple of years I was in business, but there we go. And uh, you know, what value do you offer? Um, you know, are you going to be uh, the best? Are you going to be the cheapest? Are you going to be fast? Fast at delivery? Is it fresh? Is it uh, fresh food? Is it uh, inexpensive? Are you going to be uh, more less expensive than the competition? Uh, do you offer a full service? Uh, you know, range of uh, services or products. Uh, made in Maine is uh, is for, particularly in the craft business, uh, or uh, you know, people who are making um, you know clothes. Uh, main made seems to have some cachet and actually furniture I've got something like three clients and uh, you know people uh, people love the fact that if it's made in Maine uh, it's going to be uh, you know a craft uh, you know it's going to be unique it's going to be produced by you know in, in a small factory and uh, you can charge an extra uh, extra premium on that you know, it's not something that's uh, made in a mega factory. Uh, if it's man-made, it's going to be uh, craft-made, probably by someone who really has a an interest in in designing, you know, furniture or designing crafts or uh, you know, designing clothes that are uh, are unique. Uh, are you offering better quality in, in the food business? You know, organic is. Uh, you know, the way to go, if you can do organic, you can charge a premium for what you're doing, or is it convenient, is it simple? So what is it that you're going to do better uh, than the people who are your, your competitors or potential competitors? And to be kind of clear about that, as I said, some some of those things, if you're inexpensive, you've, you've got to be really, really efficient. Um, but uh, if it's man-made, if it's full service, uh, you can charge uh, charge a bit more for that. So think about it is what's going to give you the premium price. Um, I always encourage people to go for the uh, you know the, the higher end of the market if you can possibly do that. And uh, you know I learned something from I was doing some work up in the Katahdin area, uh, 
and I interviewed the, the guy who runs uh, um, the was the New England Outdoor Center, which is a kind of high end place. You know, great food, great accommodation, and uh, I, I was asking him what what is it? What will it take for the Katahdin area to have uh, uh, a really robust uh, tourist industry? And he said, "Well, you've got to have." Um, he gave me an answer I, I didn't understand. He said, you've got to upgrade the inventory. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, all the hotels up there, all the uh, motels were developed for the mills. You know, when East Millinocket, Patton, uh, you know, Millinocket uh, had, had mills, uh, they put hotels in there uh, for people come to serve the mills. So they were never intended to be high end. Uh, so... Uh, I mean, that's what we have now. We have things that were holiday inns or ramadas uh, that, uh, you know, where people coming to visit the mills or, you know, people coming to, to visit their friends uh, and their relatives. That's what they had. He said, I have people coming up from New York City and from Boston in their Mercedes and their, uh, their BMWs and they have money to spend. You need to give them money to spend. So... If you're in the kind of tourist business, uh, it, uh, it your your clients are local people who might pay you know a hundred bucks to go for a hike in Acadia. Uh, it's uh, it's people coming from from away uh, who will pay two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars for a unique experience. So so that's go for them and then uh in the shoulder season then you might have the local people who are coming out so adjust your prices in in the uh you know the shoulder season but uh make sure that those people with their mercedes and their bmws coming from away uh with money to spend make sure you give them something for them to spend it on a unique main experience or a unique main product david speaking sense? of uh, we had Chris asking if there's actually, if, is there any type of certification you can get for Made in Maine? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, but uh, if you go to maine.gov, uh, that, that's my kind of one-stop shop. Or if you go to the Maine Craft Association, uh, the Maine, you know, the, there are organizations who would be able to answer that. Mm -hmm. So so try that. And if you can't find uh can't find the answer through main.gov or the main craft association um mm. you know email me yeah it looks like also mainmade.com is, is uh on the main.gov website basically links to main made uh as uh basically that certification mm. it's what i is what i was just seeing but um lots of resources yeah anyway there you go okay so your uh, value proposition, fancy name for why should somebody buy from you rather than someone else. Uh, so be really clear about uh, who your target customer is, whether it's you know something really you know one kind of demographic or whether it's broad. You know what are, what are the products or services? You know what pain points are you addressing? You know how is your offering better than other people? And uh, you, you know how will they feel after buying from you? Um, will they feel good about it, or will they say eh, it's just a yeah, yeah, another uh, another one, one of many? Uh, so, so your value proposition. So, uh, a, a score mentor can help you with this. And in score.org, we have templates for you know business uh, business plans with templates for cash flow. Uh, some people want to go it alone. And that's okay. Uh, some people say, "Yeah, I'd like a mentor to to help me with this." And sometimes, you know, it'd be kind of one meeting to to get you going in the right direction. Sometimes it's uh, half a dozen meetings to to get you going in the right direction. But as we uh, we say in our tagline, we're here for the life of your business. Uh, you know, many mentors have relationships that go on for six years, seven years, uh, you know, for a long time. So someone will start a business and they'll start small. And then after, uh, you know, it would just be them and their, their cousin who's running it. After a few years, they'll say, oh, we need to hire an employee. I don't know. I've never done that before. How do we do that? How do you advertise for an employee? You know, what kind of questions do you ask? You know, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, 
what kind of employee handbook do I need to have, et cetera, or I need help with digital marketing. So, so many clients will start off small and uh, then as they, as they grow, as they develop, uh, they need more. So be clear about your value proposition, and that may change in time as you add on more, uh, more services, add in more products. So value proposition example, well, in the coffee shop, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's competing against uh, Dunkin' and uh, Starbucks, Tim Hortons. So, so what is it that you uh, that you offer that uh, others don't? Uh, my uh, kind of favorite place I go is Wicked Brew here in Bangor. So it's you know owned by a young guy. Uh, all the, uh, the the range of coffees is phenomenal. It started off just coffee, then they got into home baked goods. And uh, you know, I love going there. I meet clients there because it's uh, got a great kind of vibe, great atmosphere, and it's uh, it's locally owned. So I, I I have no idea how their prices compare against uh, you know Starbucks or Tim Hortons or or Duncan, but I just like the vibe and I like the, I like to be uh, uh, helping a local business. You know, Amazon, most customer centric company. Uh, uh, if I need something for my business or, uh, you know, a gift for, for my wife, it's, it's often tempting just to go to Amazon. But uh, I try to diversify and say, OK, well, who else would sell that product? And uh, I'll go there, you know, instead. But, you know, I know when I log on to, uh, you know, uh, in, into my browser, you know, Amazon is always there. It's one of the top top uh, links that's uh, on, on the browser. And I'm sure they pay uh, Firefox to to do that, but uh, most customer centric company Walmart, you know, they, they uh, they're all over the place, and uh, they they go they work in price, so they have uh, uh, because they're so big they can, you know, work out uh, they they just through through sheer volume they can get the lowest prices anywhere and they have low lowest overheads. And uh, you know Walmart uh, now, now is in has been for a few years in Scotland, where they're branded as ASDA, but it's owned by uh, owned by Walmart. So they're in other countries, just other than just the U.S. and uh, Canada. And uh, Whole Foods, if you go to Whole Foods, you know it's uh, ethically produced, high quality food, and you're paying a premium for that. So that's how. Other companies have uh, put their value proposition. So, so what is yours going to be? You know, are you going to be the best, fastest, cheapest? You know, what's your what is your uniqueness going to be? And uh, a lot of uh, a lot of mainers like to support main companies, as I do with Wicked Brew Coffee and uh, a, a few other companies that uh, I always go to rather than going to the the big chains. So. Note your value proposition, and this will be in the slides that goes out. What is the problem you're solving? What is your solution? Who's your target market? So how do you how do you you know test out? I had uh, you know somebody on Friday who wanted to create a, a learning management system. So uh, so I so, so asked them how are you going to test it. He wasn't very sure, so uh, I gave him some ideas. Uh, test it, ask customers, you know, open-ended questions. So this person was in Rockland. So I said, well, go along to the, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, go to business after hours and uh, find out some, uh, you know, people in the niche that you're, uh, you're going to and ask them the question. If I did this, would you, would you buy it? So, um, you know, going to Chamber of Commerce, uh, most of them have a business after hours. I know the Bangor one does, Penn Bay does down in Rockland, uh, you know, up in uh, you know, Presque Isle and Caribou also have uh, business after hours or the equivalent. So it's a good way to, uh, without spending any money, kind of meet some customers. Uh, so how do you test your value proposition? Um, marketing people always always say, well, if you want to be in your local market, sign up for LinkedIn, sign up for Facebook, um, you know, post uh, uh, white papers, post articles. You need to establish yourself as a, um, an expert in, uh, in what you're doing um, so that people say, yeah, uh, 
there's David. Yeah, David is an expert in executive coaching. He, he puts some pretty good stuff in there. You know, I always, I, I will follow him, follow his organization, etc. So as to, you know, you can do it in low cost ways, Chamber of Commerce, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. And as you uh, sell more, you can say, well, you know, I've been selling this, you know, if I'm a coffee shop, selling these coffees, um, you know, what else would you buy if you if you came in? You know, would, would you like home-baked goods? Would you like uh, muffins or donuts? Uh, what is it? So you might find that you actually have more than one market segment at each of the value proposition. You know, that's a nice place to be. You might end up with, uh, you know, two or three um, different market segments with different value propositions and your markets may change over time you know what works uh what works this year may not work in uh in a year year and a half or, or two years uh somebody else may come in and do it better than you do so you know what's the what's the next big thing coming along so your market uh, may change over time and it probably will change over time and uh you know to be viable and to to keep growing or to to keep the market, uh, you know, the revenue that you have coming in, uh, you may need to change as well. So it's something to keep keep doing. Keep keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the market, and uh, keep adding value added things, services, and products. So developing a good value proposition, yeah, it, it can be challenging. And revisiting, edit, editing, and say. Uh, you will probably have to keep doing that for the life of your business. Um, I know that uh, here in uh, Bangor, um, you know, for, for ice cream, Giffords was uh, the place to go. And uh, Giffords was, uh, you know, Giffords and Baskin Robbins were the two kind of big players. And then along came Fielder's Choice and uh, that changed the game. And of course, uh, Giffords uh, had the fire and they weren't, uh, they weren't selling, uh, you know, through the their regular outlet for a year and a half, or maybe it was a year. And so Fielder's Choice came in and uh, that place is crowded now anytime I, I go over to get ice cream. And uh, so so somebody will be coming along to take over what you do if uh, money is to be made there. So uh, there's a link here, how to write a, a value proposition and there's examples, there's tips. Uh, ident identifying your core value proposition and uh, you know, another article. So when you get these uh, slides, you can kind of click on that and that will go in a lot more depth than, uh, than I could possibly do here. So I'll let you do that on your, on your, in your own time. So your team of professionals, your business mentor, you know, score is always happy to do this. Uh, and it's very easy to sign up because Jasper said, go to go to score.org. If you don't remember anything from from this um, from this talk, uh, just remember score.org. You can go there. You can find uh, uh, online training. You can sign up for online uh, on, online training um, tools, templates. You can get a mentor. Uh, you can get uh, many many of your business questions answered just by going there. So there's two uh, two sections. There's the national stuff, and then there's the main stuff. So as you sign into the main stuff, it will ask, you know, what's your zip code? And it will, re it will route you to either Northern Maine or to Central Maine or to Southern Maine. And uh, you will get uh, customized Northern Maine, Southern Maine or Central Maine uh, resources and uh, and mentors. So a business mentor is a good thing to have. Uh, your attorney, when you get going, uh, usually most attorneys will give you the first half hour or the first hour free. Um, so you don't need to invest a lot of money there. Uh, as you get your business going, you want to separate out your, your kind of personal bank account from your business bank account. And so if your banker will uh, will help you to do that. Uh, most um, most businesses will need some kind of insurance. Um, you know, I have liability insurance. Uh, some of my bigger clients need need that. Like University of Maine, anytime I do an RFQ, I have to tell them that uh, I have 
you know, I have a liability insurance for a million dollars per per time, and a few other things, uh, and that's uh, you know, for some kind of clients, that's uh, if you don't have that, you, you know, you, you can't put your bid in, you can't do the RFQ, etc. So, um, you know, every type of business will need a different kind of kind of insurance. So, for the liability insurers I have, it's, it's not. You know, I, I just go to State Farm, my local State Farm insurance agent. But pretty much any uh, agent will give you that, and it's something like three hundred a year. So it's not it's not a lot. Uh, you would need an accountant, and uh, interestingly enough, I, I went to my attorney uh, when I was living in Dallas and moving to to Bangor. So somebody said, oh, "Rudman Winchell." Yeah, so I went to Rudman Winchell. Guy Hans Peterson is that. So, what kind of business should I be? Should I be a, uh, you know, small corporation? Should I be uh, an LLC? Uh, should it be, um, you know, a sole proprietorship or partnership? And he said, "Oh, that's an accounting question." It is. So he sent me to an accountant, and the accountant said, "Well, let's set you up. You know, the best way is to be an LLC, uh, but you'll be taxed as an S corp." Yeah. So that's the way we uh, we went. So you'll need to talk to your accountant and your attorney and your banker to figure out uh, you know, what kind of business do I want to be. And uh, you'll find uh, business peers. I have a client down in the down the mid coast. Uh, it's the the Craig near Inn, and uh, you know, and, and they have a restaurant, the Causeway Restaurant, and uh, they uh, they joined the. You know the, the the I think it was the main hospitality uh, association, and they got lots and lots of help from peers uh, who were not in the same market as them. They weren't in the mid coast, but they got help from lots of places. And uh, this year, uh, they got an award from the the main tourist association as being the innkeepers of the year. So they did that because they were willing to listen, and because they. Uh, they got help from people like uh, you know, I, my wife and I helped them uh, as paid consultants, and uh, they, they got other paid consultants. But they got an awful lot of help from their uh, from their business peers. So, join the, the chamber of commerce, joining uh, you know trade associations. Uh, you'll get a lot of help. Uh, and it's from people who really know what they're doing. So reaching out for help, that's your team of professionals. And there may be others uh, others that you can uh, tap into as well. Uh, so what kind of assurance is ap appropriate? Uh, I would suggest go to uh, two or three business brokers. Uh, in in, uh, in SCORE, if you ask me, you know, who should I go to, I would give you three. Uh, SCORE always does that, will give you three. Uh, three names to go to for anything, whether it's insurance, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a marketing agency, will always give you three. And uh, you may already know one. You may go to somebody who's in your local local area because you know them. They've got a good reputation and you just choose to go to one. But the insurance can be for property, uh, security, general, general liability, which is what I have. If you have a motor vehicle that is going to be registered through your business, then do that, uh, workers' comp, you know, health and life insurance. You, you, you may need that if you have the kind of the sole breadwinner. And uh, if you get sick, if your business will get, um, will get impacted by that, uh, you may need uh, health and life assurance for your business, for you as a business owner, or maybe just, uh, just in general. Or some, some business. Uh, so, um, not my area of expertise, but I can certainly point you in the right direction to someone who would be able to help. And uh, relevant regulations. Um, city, you, your city clerk uh, will be really, could be really helpful there. If you want to be a, just a, a, a sole proprietor or a partnership, uh, the city clerk is the, is the place to go. And they're usually uh, extremely helpful. So we're able to say uh, very quickly, you know, what what business licenses, what approvals do you need to have? Um, you know, here's the zoning. You know, if you if you want to open something, then uh, here's the residential areas. 
here's the areas where you can, uh, uh, you know, if you want to build a, a factory or rent some space, here's the industrial industrial parks, here's where you can go, or here's where you can, you know, have a little different, uh, different kind of zoning and here's where you can fit in. Um, you know, here's the building codes, uh, talk to the fire man show, here's the taxes you need to, uh, need to have, um, et cetera. So whatever you need, whatever kind of business, if you're a, uh, uh, your city clerk can can really be really be helpful there, and uh, main.gov is a great place to go, um, and uh, super helpful things. But if you need a business license or disability access, the, the labor laws you need to find out. Uh, you can click on that. Um, if you need to hire seasonal uh, immigration people, uh, you know from uh, from other countries, here's how you do it. You know, medical care, sales taxes, you know, whatever you need. Um, Main.gov is a great place to go. And uh, sometimes if you, if you need uh, federal um, federal help, then Main.gov main can tell you what agencies that you need to, need to go and talk to. And uh, personally, I've found uh, all those agencies to be helpful. The website is very, very helpful. You know, uh, for instance, if you... So I, I want to be, uh, you know, David Green Consulting. Uh, I would go and check, uh, check does somebody already have that name or whatever name you want to use. You can find out if it's uh, if it's registered already. Uh, if it is registered, then you have to think of, you know, some other uh, other name to have as well uh, to, to change it. Um, or, uh, yeah, so just go. Uh, Go to main.gov, you'll find it uh, very valuable. So um, think about who do you need to add to your team? You know, whether it's somebody you have to pay, uh, your banker, your accountant, um, and uh, your attorney will give you, you know, a free meeting uh, to start, uh, pointing you in the right direction, and then you can register your back your uh, you know with register your company with the with your banker and your uh, you know accountant will uh, and uh, lawyer will help you get set up you can do it yourself or you can uh, main.gov and uh, some documentation score has uh, can help you do it yourself uh, a lot of people will do that a lot of people say well I'll pay the extra couple hundred dollars to get a lawyer to do it for me to help me get set up so it's your choice yeah, so ask yourself what insurance do you need, what local regulations, and and uh, what state or federal reg regulations will apply. And the kinds of business, excuse me, we'll have a drink. Yep, you can be a sole proprietor. It's very easy to set up. You can have it probably set up the same day. If you want to be a lim li limited liability corporation, uh, <laughs> probably cost you a couple hundred dollars. You can do it yourself, uh, or you know, a general partnership, or a multi-member uh, LLC. And with all those things, there are templates you can get. You will need uh, to set yourself up, and you will need to have, uh, um, you know, you you'll need to have a, an operating agreement somewhere along the way as well you know as a c corporation s corporation and uh attorney tax accountant can help i had a you know a client uh just uh two weeks ago uh or three weeks ago and uh they'd been in operation for 12 years and uh the, the partners didn't get along particularly well but they managed to stick it for you know for 12 years and every now and again, one would say, yeah, I, I think I want to be out. So they didn't have an operating agreement. So um, my advice was, OK, it's not my area of expertise. You need a, an operating agreement that says, you know, how, how does somebody buy into this? If we need to take on another partner, uh, if somebody wants out, uh, if we need to put another influx of capital, if everybody needs to put another 10,000, how do we do it? Etc. So I uh, gave them a template from SCORE and uh, set, and they also read an article from SCORE and said, no, read this, 
fill in the template, then I'll get you a, a lawyer. Um, this will be uh, working with the guy, Alan Shaver, who's a pretty good lawyer, uh, and he's in Southern Maine. So I said, I'll get a meeting with Alan, and uh, he will help you refine your operating agreement. So they filled in their operating agreement to the best of their ability. We met with Alan, and he said, here's some things to think about that you haven't thought about, because he's both a lawyer and he had a partnership in, a, oh, I think it was a, you know, a garage a repair shop. Uh, and so he said, Here, here's all the things to think about that, uh, um, you know, to put in your operating agreement. And so they then refined their operating agreement and they went to the, the law company, um, which was Eaton Peabody in Bangor, and said, here's what we want. So it saved them a lot of money by, you know, getting some, uh, using the SCORE template, getting the, the lawyer from SCORE, the retired lawyer from SCORE to kind of advise them. And then they probably don't need very much help at all from Eaton Peabody to, to get their operating agreement going. So whether you're an LLC multi-member LSC, or whether you're an S Corp or a C corporation, you will need uh, an operating agreement. So we can we can help you with this so it doesn't cost you too much money. Yeah. And Secretary of State website, always helpful, main.gov, one-stop shop for many, many answers for questions that you may have. Yeah, so the operating agreement, uh, I've already uh, kind of talked about that from uh, from uh, my my client who had been in business for a long time, but as uh, you know, Alan Shaver said, you'd be it's a lot better to have your operating agreement before you really get in business than you know be in for six years or twelve years in the case of my clients, because um, you can get in very costly legal disputes. But if it's uh, laid out uh, in advance when everybody gets along with each other then uh, it's much better. And each partner should have their own attorney look at it. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good from a company perspective, but is it fair for, is it fair for each? Is it fair for you yeah, as an individual? Yeah, so other important company details, um, you can, you know, for your company name, um, check the main company reg registry and, uh, also, the U.S. Patents and Trade Office. We have a uh, we have a guy up at the uh, University of Maine uh, who uh, uh, is very helpful if you have uh, something you want to trademark or uh, or patent. Um, uh, John Hutchinson, his name is, and we can certainly you know put him in touch with you if you want to check if uh, if you want to trademark something or uh, or patent it, but. Uh, the main registry in main.gov is very helpful to know if somebody is already already has your name or if you meet, need to make an amendment to your name, etc. And uh, you know your your attorney can help, and uh, you need a kind of certificate of formation here that uh, attorney can help with. And uh, you get your numbers. You know for tax reasons, you need your federal uh, EIN um, employee something number, uh, et cetera. So uh, main.gov can help you with all this stuff and uh, you know, your, your lawyer can, can help you with it as well. And that's uh, something that lawyers do all the time. Uh, they can do it in minutes where it might take you a couple hours to do it. So is it worth hiring someone to do it or not? Uh, you would know. So, um, again, the kind of summary thing here, how are we doing for time? One o'clock. Um, yeah, so for you, what type of business seems most important? Uh, we have a document uh, that's a, the 22 most frequently asked questions for starting a business in Maine. And uh, most of my clients really appreciate this because it describes the difference between being a, you know, a sole proprietor, a partnership, an LLC, or, or a corporation. So what is the most appropriate for the type of uh, type of uh, business you want to have. And as you grow, you can always change it, of course. So one partner is simple, more, more partners, more complex. Uh, research the business name in main.gov. Uh, will you own sales, sales taxes in your sales or not? Um, 
you know, what kind of bank do you really need? Is a, a local bank uh, appropriate or a regional bank? Uh, what is best for you? And, uh, you know, what kind of licenses do you need? Um, for most of us, uh, local licenses or state licenses might be appropriate. In some cases, you may need federal licenses, particularly if you're selling to the federal government. And uh, if you're selling, selling to the federal government, we partner with uh, Apex, uh, it's a government agency. There's, uh, they're in pretty much uh, every town of any size, there will be an Apex rep. You know, there's one in Bangor, one in Machias, one in Caribou, uh, et cetera. So if you want to sell to the government, we can certainly help with, uh, certainly help, uh, with that uh, to have people who can open doors. So funding, you know, you will we'll need to ask yourself how much funding you need. So having uh, some kind of business plan will help you with that. Um, say, uh, you know, score can certainly help with the business plan. And then, uh, you know, we have uh, people who are retired accountants who will help you with uh, uh, help with the cash flow. So you can look at the cash flow and uh, how much do you need up front? Uh, you know, what's your deficit going to be before the money starts rolling in? And it's probably more than you think. So we can help with a two to three year uh, kind of cash flow projection. Um, when I first uh, started in business, uh, I did some uh, presentations with, uh, you know, my accountant and uh, and a banker. And uh, we, we gave this to, this presentation to many people. And uh, my accountant always said, you know, you've got three, three kind of cash flow scenarios. There's the one that you say, yeah, this is, uh, this is my cash flow scenario. Then what if you're more successful than uh, you think you will be, you know, how are you going to compare? you know, cope with success? What if you have to hire people quicker? Or what if you have to produce more services uh, or ice cream than you, you think you, you will need? How are you going to cope with that? And then there's the other scenario that what will happen if uh, sales are slower than I think? What will happen if costs are higher than I project? How, how are you going to uh, deal with that? Will you have enough money in the bank to last how long? You know, six months, a year? forever. Um, so it's good to know that uh, without uh, saying, okay, I've started my business. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that people will start buying from me and that I can expand my customer base. But what happens if that doesn't happen? So you know, how much money will you need in a buffer? So finding funding, excuse me again. You know, many of my uh, many of my clients, uh, you know, uh, don't need an awful lot to start. Um, you know, so my my wife and I put thirty thousand of our own money to get going, because uh, we had uh, some equipment to buy, but uh, we had a lot of certifications. You know, as an executive coach, you need certifications in uh, you know different instruments, different tools, different assessments, etc. So bootstrapping, which we'll go into a bit more uh, in the, the the next page, and uh, family and friends. Sometimes family and friends can uh, will give you some money, but uh, you got to have pretty good relationships because what happens if they say, "Yeah, I'll lend you, uh, you know, five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars," but you know, uh, I've got a car repair coming up. I'm going to need that money or a new roof in my house. You know, when can I get it back? So. Um, sometimes that can be a good idea, sometimes not. Uh, there's grants and competitions. Uh, uh, Maine, uh, no, SCORE in Northern Maine has a, a competition coming up uh, in uh, November. Um, so, so, so you might want to say, okay, I'd, I'd like, uh, you know, top prize seven and a half thousand dollars. So yeah, I could use that. Um, so there are competitions. Um, if you keep uh, keep your eye open, um, you, you know, there are many of them around the state every year and there are grants. So a lot of people, uh, particularly if they're starting up a nonprofit, say, oh, grants, uh, how, how much grant money is available? And uh, grants are 
uh, usually a lot more work than you think. And there are always strings attached. Uh, you know, if, uh, the main technology institute has grants. So it might be uh, September or, or October. Uh, so you would make it that uh, they're going to make that grant. So you can put in the grant is uh, going to take a lot of time. Uh, there are always strings attached and it's very uncertain. Uh, main Technology Institute probably gets um, 10, 10 times as many people asking for grants as uh, money available. Uh, so it's always more work. It's uncertain. You can't rely on it, but they are available. Uh, we have a subject matter expert, uh, Victoria Flynn, in, in Northern Maine, who is an expert in that. And uh, it's always a three-step thing. If I have a nonprofit client says, yeah, I want a grant, or uh, someone who, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, starting up, uh, you know, any kind of nonprofit, I always say, uh, look at uh, look at this video by Victoria who explained the ins and outs of grants. Then we'll have a session with Victoria and then you, she will help you uh, write your grant if you still want to do it. And, uh, you know, I'd say a third of the time, half the time, people say, eh, I don't think I want to start that nonprofit or I don't want to go after that grant. Uh, crowdfunding, uh, I mean, that's a big thing in Facebook these days. Uh, I don't know if it's still as popular as it was. It certainly was a few years ago um, where some people would say, uh, yeah, I you know, want $10,000 to start up a nonprofit to do, you know, um, take, care of, uh, take care of pets or do something like that. And uh, they will get uh, they will get money from from people who think it's yeah, it's a good cause. I don't mind putting ten dollars into that. If you have enough people putting in ten dollars, then you may have enough to to get what you need. Uh, or loans, uh, you get a loan from uh, the bank uh, or a loan from you know SBA other organizations, and uh, but loans. Uh, they usually uh, want you to put 20% 20, 20 of your own money in. So if you need to, you know, want to start a food truck and you need $100,000, then, you know, the bank or the credit union will be looking for you to put uh, 20000 of your own money in. And, uh, the, you know, they're looking for, uh, looking for guarantees. They, they want to know that they'll get their money back if things don't go well. And uh, the, I mean, the hope that things do go well. But uh, there's almost always uh, a personal guarantee needed. And, uh, you know, some people, if it's uh, something that's going to be uh, scalable, uh, you know, for a product or a service that they think will really take off, uh, venture capitalists will could, could be involved. And, you know, we've got uh, Main Angels is probably the one best known here or through the Main Technology Institute could probably link... Uh, link people up who, um, you know, venture capitalists with people who need venture capital, capital, but they will own uh, a percentage of the company. And I had a friend of the, the Dallas area who was uh, funded by venture capitalists. And, uh, he's, you know, he said after a meeting with a venture capitalists, no, David, these are not nice people. You know, venture capitalists uh, are investing their money and they're looking for quick returns. They're not looking for, you know, five percent return over ten years. They're looking for, you know, a hundred percent return in two years, uh, and a stake in the the profits of the company. So be very selective there. Uh, venture capital might be the way to go, but be careful. As my friend said, these are not nice people. I'm sure some of them are gone. Yeah. So. Some have to be nice people, but uh, uh, very often with venture capitalists, uh, they uh, want to say, uh, you know, switch out the CEO for someone who uh, they think will be better. They will do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, and bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is very popular among uh, SCORE clients. Uh, funding your business growth using profits. So it does reduce the risks, particularly the financial risk. If you can say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run my business, I'm gonna do it in evenings and weekends, 
uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my day job in the meantime. And it's easy when you know cash is you know smaller, uh, but when things uh, things start to take off, then you may need some uh, more money than what you have in your pocket. Uh, but it can build your experience with your target market. You know, get clear about your target market. Uh, you have a client, you have a few clients, and uh, you know, you get experience using that. You can ask them, okay, what else would you need? So there's a guy, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll hold this up. Uh, probably can't read that very well, but uh, it's a small business life cycle by Charlie Gilkey. I would encourage you, the, the book is only six bucks or so on Amazon. As we know, Amazon is the uh, wants to be most available. <laughs> well, their value proposition is that they're you know they're, they're everywhere, easy to deal with. So Charlie Gilkey, small business life cycle. So he has a, he has a kind of an idea that if you're getting going, he calls it beachhead, uh, kind of beachhead service, beachhead offering. So what you start off small. So what's the one thing that you're really good at? And then with that, kind of expand it by having more clients who will buy that or existing clients ask them, you know, what else could I add to this uh, kind of beachhead, um, you know, service that, that I have. So um, validate your concept using the Charlie Gilkey model, you know, fail fast, fail often, something doesn't work. Okay, so what? I've learned something. Uh, let's, uh, let's try something else. So let's do a tweak to it. You know, get out and sell, listen to the feedback. What are your clients saying about it? They like it, they like it, but, or they like it and, and, uh, you know, whatever funds you get from the sales, uh, use that to, you know, enhance your offering and uh, make more and sell more. So that's uh, that's bootstrapping your business. You don't need to borrow too much, but you're you're not making money from this. What you're doing is gaining experience getting experience, uh, establishing a market, establish some credibility. You know, you can uh, describe it in, uh, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn saying, hey, you know, here's some uh, experience from uh, you know, some clients. So you're establishing your, uh, your credibility in the, in the cyber world. Yeah, so ways to do it, moonlighting, keep your day job, use your free time to build your business at the weekend, at the um, you know evenings, etc., or you can uh, subcontract, uh, develop your skills by helping others who may be uh, somebody who's a bigger organization who says, "Oh yeah, I could use uh, I could use uh, David's skills to do this." In fact, uh, I've been in business nineteen years and I still subcontract. Uh, I do it for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, one one is it gives me. Uh, gives me access to markets that uh, I wouldn't normally have. So I do subcontract contracting to someone who uh, work, does specialize in government business. So I was out in the, the West Coast and, uh, you know, Washington State earlier this year, uh, got some work out in uh, Seattle next year from someone who's a specialist in, uh, in getting government business. And uh, I'm a specialist in the things I do well. So there's a good match there. So I, I still do subcontracting. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, there's a couple of ladies in Dallas who um, most of their clients are uh, females. And so if they need a male coach, they will bring me in. So I, I, I may have to, you know, my, the client may be in Dallas, it may be in Arizona, you know, maybe somewhere in the South. Uh, but uh, subcontracting is a way. Uh, and the other good thing about subcontracting, particularly out of state, is that uh, out of state uh, clients pay more than than you know Maine. Maine is a Maine is a tough market. You don't get uh, you probably will not get very rich in uh, in Maine. So subcontracting as uh, out of state is a good thing there. Uh, product placement, uh, feature product in a public place. Uh, you know, my uh, my bank uh, features uh, things from time to time. You know, the entrance they'll have one of their uh, clients. You know, it, it might be crafts, it might be uh, 
might be something else, but they'll have a, a little place that they uh, in the foyer of the bank. So in a public place, could be the library, we'll, we'll do it for you, or your bank or your lawyer's office. Uh, you might start with special events, you know, church, school, country fairs. Uh, you may have a table somewhere, table at a craft fair. Uh, it costs you uh, might cost you fifty dollars if that if that's your market, but uh, business expos or craft fairs, um, you, know, you could uh, you could take a table. It costs you a little bit, and uh, you can talk to people. And uh, yeah, always keep your day job until you're until you're sure. So funding options. Uh, think about what's best for you. What types of funding would be viable loan grant um you know bootstrapping your own money etc um you know keep it simple at the start uh could you you know you you may have a big vision for what you're what you can offer to uh to clients but uh is there something simple we can do just to get started just to get credibility uh just to uh, just to get experience you know pick a, the lowest cost uh, lowest risk way. I personally don't like taking risks with my business, and I don't like my uh, clients taking too many risks as well. As well, so can your savings bootstrapping get you to to break even, and then you can start uh, uh, increasing your your costs, increasing your um, your uh, your footprint and your reach. And uh, you know, can you plow your profits back in? So understanding financial statements, I think we're kind of running out of time here, but uh, you don't need to be an accountant for this, um, but you do need to manage your business. So in the early days, uh, I have to say, I started using Excel and said, I can, I, I'm an expert in Excel. I can manage my business using Excel and I got in trouble pretty quick. So I uh, found uh, somebody who was an accountant. It was part of a, uh, a referral network, uh, BNI is uh, BNI is a good referral network if you're, uh, you know, you're selling to other uh, small businesses. That's um, Business Network International. Uh, there are two chapters in uh, this part of Maine uh, in the Bangor area, and uh, it means you'd be networking weekly with uh, other people who are small businesses who are not in competition with you who will open doors for you. So I, uh, I I was part of a referral network, and uh, you know I got an hour from an accountant, and I I gave her um, you know some uh, person I did a personality test and uh, gave her some feedback for an hour. So we did a swap. So so she helped me get going with QuickBooks, uh, so you can understand your balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flow. And when I moved to QuickBooks, it was a very easy way of managing my business, and. Uh, we have many uh, kind of retired accountants in SCORE who can help you get going uh, going with that. And uh, the links there, what a balance sheet looks like, what an income statement looks like, cash flow statement looks like. Um, if you have uh, QuickBooks or equivalent, um, you will find it pretty easy to manage your business. And, uh, you know, I, I looked at my business certainly weekly or you know, if I got a big check coming in or I had a big expenditure, uh, you know, in the early days, I kept looking uh, uh, in intensely at my cash flow. Yeah. So a business plan, I would encourage you all to have a business plan. In SCORE, we have uh, templates for it available. It can be a one-page template or it can be, you know, uh, many, many pages, depending on kind of what your uh, uh the complexity you need in your business plan, and we can help you match it up. So it documents your vision, documents your goals, uh, describes the problem solution market, who's your competitors, you know, what's the, you know, who's your team, what's the business model, etc. I will give you examples of business models if you click on the, uh, on that. And, uh, you know, particularly if you're going to ask for uh, a loan from a bank, um, they will be nice, but they will be asking some uh, some detailed questions there. So, as uh, you know, I, I was working with a, a guy who he was actually a uh, he needed a, 
sizable loan for a boat because he was uh you know going to be uh going to have a charter boat business and he did quite a quite a big thing and so i, I was co-mentoring with uh, another mentor and we said you know we're going to be you you're going to ask for a loan and your credit rating isn't all that good so i actually held off for six months until his credit rating was good to his uh, uh his, his credit and uh, said, so you're going to be asking for a loan. So my co-mentor and I, we will pretend we're bankers. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to wear our suits here and uh, we're going to ask them the kind of questions that bankers are going to ask. Uh, so uh, that will be a dry run for when you meet with your bank. So, um, so we can uh, help with uh, your business plan, particularly if you need a loan from uh, someone uh, and uh, particularly if you need to be putting some, some of your own money in, etc. So bankers don't like risks. So the business plan is for the bank, it's for investors, if you have investors, for partners, if you want to uh, have your, uh, you know, your cousin kind of join you, the, the business plan will kind of de-risk it, explain what it's all about. Uh, if you have a, start hiring employees and say, so what's your business all about? I said, well, here's our business plan. Let me share the highlights of the business plan for your uh, for your employees. And uh, if you're, uh, you know, your kind of business partners, some of your sales channels. If you're selling through uh, selling through uh, other outlets, you know, you, people are manufacturing, distributing for you. But a business plan is a very useful thing to have, and it's a living document. Um, but it's always good to be clear about what your business plan is and where you're going, your vision. And if you come up against some uh, some th some uh, barriers, say, you know, I can't do that. That doesn't make sense anymore. Then change your business plan. So putting it all together, what's the problem? What's your solution? Your value proposition? Test it out in small ways with. Um, you know, uh, join your local chamber of commerce or go along as a guest and kind of ask people, uh, would you buy this? You know, what's the biggest issues you're dealing with right now? You know, and kind of measure it, uh, tweak it, and, uh, you know, keep keep your business plan uh, alive, whether it's a one pager, whether it's many pages. So in conclusion, starting a business, it's a lot of work and it'll be more work than you think it will be uh, having a business and the risks it takes is not for everyone. Uh, you do need to know your customers. You need to know your competition. Who else is doing this? Uh, you know, what can I do better than they are? Am I going to be cheaper, better, faster, better customer service? Uh, always say, start small, you know, test it out, get some feedback, learn from it, adapt. And uh, we in SCORE, we are... Uh, you know, it's not like we're from corporate. We're here to help. We're from SCORE and uh, we can help. Um, we can help with your questions. Uh, we can help you find the resources. We can find help uh, with our in-depth subject matter experts. Uh, if you need to pay for help, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a marketing agency, uh, we can point you in the right direction and give you, you know, three three names to, to follow up with. So let's see, do we have any more? Yeah, so about SCORE, free mentoring. Um, we're all volunteers. It's free, uh, free for one session, free for many sessions, part, or, part of the SBA organizations, uh, 320 plus offices throughout the USA, uh, 10,000 mentors across the US. And uh, yeah, that's it. You can connect with SCORE Mentor and we'll open it to questions. Any questions? Mm -hmm. And uh, how many people do we have? Uh, We're down to eight, but I eight, would hope eight. that you're you're very you're very thorough with your uh, presentation. But I'm sure I would hope that someone has some questions for us today. Yeah. Well, let me stop sharing so we can see everyone. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'll do a what? question. I didn't oh, raise. Hey. 
ironically, but since no one's chiming in. Um, so we have a property right on Route 90 in Warren on the way to Camden. And um, I just want to know the best way to look into things like setbacks and parking ordinances or I don't know, things like that. You know, it's a mixed zone area. Um, so yeah. I can do a business here, but yeah, all those things. Yeah, whoever is the, the town manager in Warren, and if you have a you know a, a kind of town clerk, they mm -hmm. would be they would be able to answer all that stuff. Uh, in fact, if you go on the website, you may be able to find the answers anyway. You know, mm -hmm. I, I live in Bangor, and for things like that, I find that you know their website is is helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. And if it's uh, if you know if I can't get the answer, then I'll, I'll call someone. Yeah. yeah. So I suggest doing that, uh, Elspeth. Thank you. And your score mentor can help. <laughs> I don't know if they don't know if they've given you one yet. I'm hoping to have one for you uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and and I think Elspeth, you were, uh, you know, you were wondering about a nonprofit there. Uh, say yeah. with. I mean, that was kind of like uh, the the big dream, but I I think. I love, I have always, it's not a new thought to me that I should probably start smaller and then see where that leads instead of yeah. starting with the big dream. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think starting with a smaller community space with some, you know, adding some music when we're able, you know, and oh, seeing yeah. how that grows is probably better. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's your own barn, you know, you're, um, uh... yeah. Kind of cost to get going is probably not that, not, not, not that enough a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I it looks like Alessa Foley left, but I do have a. Uh, I've, I've already sent it to Elspeth, but the our kind of nonprofit readiness uh, checklist that we send out um, for nonprofits. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can. Send, I'll send that, and uh, I'll also include. Uh, if there's anyone else um, looking for that, or if, uh, if there's any other questions today before we wrap things up. All right. Well, I suppose if uh, if that'll do it, um, we want to thank thank you again, David, for another great presentation. Thank it. Thanks everyone for visiting and joining us today. Um, well, like we said earlier, this was recorded and we'll send the recording and the slide deck to everyone shortly. Uh, there's also a short survey I will be sending out. It would help us a whole lot if you fill it out. And once more, if you don't already have a mentor with us uh, from SCORE, it's free online uh, or in person. Uh, you can just sign up at SCORE.org and we're here for any step of your business. And thanks again to the TD Turtle Foundation for sponsoring today's event. And thanks one more time, David. Okay. Bye, everyone, and good luck. Thank you. Have a good one.